the events that led up to your altercation with Frank Fraser? Um, it's very hard to tell, you see. Now, Fraser talked about this uh, row that he had, and he talks. Now, if you look at me and look at the size of him and look at me, and the strength of me, if you knew, and the strength of him, and look at him as, and, and the fact that as a fighting man, he's, I mean, he wouldn't live two minutes with me. If we were left here now to fight, it'd take me two minutes to iron him out, and that's been all my life and all his life. So he states in his books, he, he slung me in a car and immediately set about me with a chopper. Well, that was, there was, he was in company with 22 people. There was 11 people sat on either side of the table in the Astor Club. And I walked in there with two other friends of mine, who were well-known people, ones of, from a well-known boxing family. And he was with uh, a lot of his cronies, the Richardsons and a fellow called Ginger Dennis and all, all kinds of, you know, people that he knocked about with his little crowd. And there was a few jocks, Jimmy Boyle, who is quite well known, uh, ex-prisoner, sculptor and that, seems quite a nice bloke. He was there. There was a well known a Glasgow gangster there called Arthur Thompson who's died since. And uh, there was a fellow there, Richie Anderson, who I was in Dharma with, another jock who I knew quite well. And they never got involved in the row because they did have a bit of respect for myself and my friends. So I did notice Fraser stabbing one of my friends on the floor and run out because that was his game, he was a bit sly, stab and run. So then all hell let loose and there was bottles broken and one thing and another and you didn't know who was fighting. There was 22 people sat at that table but most of them went through the slips. Off they went. So I saw my friend Harold Cashman on the floor with stab wounds, severe stab wounds and severe kickings and uh, he looked in a bit of a state. So I went upstairs, I'd seen Fraser stick a knife in him, so I decided to cop for Fraser. I got to the top of the stairs and there were some police coming in to the door, but they were uniformed police. They had either been called from the street or the police had been sent to, but there wasn't a mob of police, there was just a couple of police walking hurriedly towards the door. So I walked by them and there was Fraser, Eddie Richardson, a fellow called Larry, I don't know his surname, little tow rag he was, and uh, there was a fellow called Billy Staten. I remember those, and there was others. And there was two cars, so one, one of the engine running. And I said, any two of you get in the car with me, and I'll, I'll, I'll fight you fair. And uh, I went, you get in the car to Fraser. And he went, and Eddie, Eddie Richardson got in and drove the car. And I got in the back, and as I got in the back, three or four of these others all washed in the back. And somebody stabbed me in the leg. And the car took off at quite a speed. And we came to a place in Tottenham Court Road where another car that had followed us pulled up. And the street was full of blokes. And I had nearly got away, in actual fact, because there was no fighting men amongst them, you know, and not. But the little guy, held on to my, the cuff of my trousers and I couldn't pull away and that was somebody had whacked me with something and the next thing they all piled on me and I ended up downstairs in a, in a cellar. And it was a machine place where they was, had me, uh, one on bandits, you know. It was obviously their headquarters. It was then two or three people started whacking me with things and I, I didn't feel too much too much. And then I must have put my hand up to, to ward off a blow. And the chopper, one of the, as you can see in my hand there, went through the hand and you can see the scar there where it came out. And if you feel my head, you're feeling hole there. My hand was pinned to my head with a chopper. 
and somebody was trying to chop my hand off. That you see that scar there across there. So trying to chop, and I heard somebody say, "Chop his hands off, he'll never fight again." And that that was the word. And then I realised my brain must have been damaged because I couldn't speak. You know, I, I was trying to mouth something and it didn't. I couldn't speak. And I felt quite a lot of blows and one thing or another. And the next thing I knew, I woke up on a bit of on a bit of waste ground. It, an old an old boy, either a tramp or somebody, had stumbled over my body and. Uh, that saved my life because he must have told somebody and they took me to hospital and the next thing I knew it was two days later when I come to I had 370 stitches in me, three fractures in my skull and uh, that. But it gives the story about this, that and the other. I went off to, to the north of England I didn't go off. I was a year getting myself fit again and all that time they had gone to Southport, I know exactly where they went. They went first to Manchester for the Terry Downs, uh, Paul Penn, um, no, uh, the Terry Downs Pastrano fight, where I could have captured them because friends of mine up there said to me, you know, was letting me know where they were. But I wanted Fraser on my own. I wanted to catch him on my own. I nearly caught him in Wharf once in the South London. He was very lucky then because I was of the mind to do it. These days, all I'd like to do with him is smack his bum like a little boy, that's all. Frank said uh, in his interview that he was just with one of the chap he found you into the car on his own. Well, I think, I think anybody that was in the Asta will tell you the difference. You know, I don't have to tell lies about things like that. Frank Fraser talks a lot of crap about everything. Every time I see him talk, he talks about big stuff. Uh, he didn't do anything when Albert Redding knocks him spark out with one punch, and uh, he's had that all. He's only a little runt anyway, you know what I mean? He's no, you know, people don't fear him. He talks it, that's his game. He, he also said that, that you received uh, 800 stitches as opposed to stitches at 300. He wouldn't know because he'd run away. He'd run to the north of England. He went to Southport with his friend, where they got where they attacked a little waiter who we called a Greek midget. And that's what he did. He went up there and he, they got done and they had to run away back again. They beat up a little waiter. That was their game. Uh, Frank also said in the interview that he did that when he went, he went to see the craze in Bellatrix to discuss Frank and they didn't want to know and just. Money to leave. That, that, that was cobbler's because the first person that came in to uh, visit me was Reggie Cray and he said do you want anything done and I said no I, I'm going to deal with this myself and I saw Reggie and Ronnie quite a lot after that. Fraser in his life had never met a craze until they got life sentence in prison. He'd never met me. He goes around the East End with his bus, telling people where he'd done this and where he'd done. He's never ever done anything in the East End. This is all figments of his imagination. Okay. Um, he also seems to make a, a joke that he does on his tours about suing the hospital to get his ads back. Is this funny? Well, you know, it's, that, that is part of his scenario, you know, and people, uh, people that know me, that they just laugh about it. But I mean, if people want to go and listen to a bloke talk after dinner talks, uh, I do them myself. But I, do, I talk about the normal things of life and things that have happened to me through life. And uh, I don't have to make up stories. I've done this and I've done that when I haven't. And anything I talk about, I've done. And, um, you spent a lot of time after that I spent, <clears throat> I nearly captured them all, that's myself and my two friends that, that were, were with me that night, plus another friend of ours, which I don't like to mention his name because he's never been in trouble in his life. And I think if we'd have found them, I would have been looked for for a murder charge. There was no doubt, it was obvious everybody in the world knew that I would make a comeback to him, but uh, 
unfortunately. Oh, fortunately for me now, because I've, I live a straight life now, and I, I'm happy the way I am. I've got beautiful children, I've got a beautiful wife, and the, the girl I live with is, is my, you know, everything. And I live a nice life, I don't have to even think about those kind of people. When I see it, people come and talk to me and they go, oh, did you see him? And they all laugh at him, I mean, he's a joke. He's, I think his latest thing is uh, slagging off Dave Courtney. And he knows nothing whatsoever about Dave Courtney. And uh, he makes up these stories. I think it was somebody else he was slagging off a month or two ago. You know, but he's always got his sores. This is his scene. And uh, he's making a living out of it, so, all right. And have you sort of suffered any continual physical problems as a result of that? I've, I've suffered a hell of a lot of problems. I suffer today. I'm having an operation very shortly on my neck, which was part of that scenario. I, I had a big difficulty getting really fit, but my, my punch now is as hard as it ever was now because I've worked on, on that and, and I can still knock people out, you know what I mean? But he wouldn't know anything about fighting fair, you know? He doesn't know anything about those things. How did you feel when you saw him at um, running close to him? Well, I go with nice people that when I've been and I just think he's a disgusting little man. He just looks like a disgusting little man. And I've seen him at other places and uh, he just makes me sick, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't even feel like getting hold of him because I think if I was to get hold of him and whack him, people would think I'd taken a liberty. Although, there's about four years difference in our age, you know what I mean? So when, we, when I was 35 and he was 39, it, was, it wouldn't have mattered then, you know what I mean? I could have done it, but now I would feel I was taken advantage.